Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the second lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. Uh, in the first lecture, we provided a broader outline of the course, namely thematic preliminaries, sociological modernity ultra modernity, I mean the structuralist interpretation, society as human creation, I mean western Marxist perspectives on modernity and how to synthesize modernity with social theory and then how to aim at destruction of, uh, I mean deconstruction of modernity, okay. thereby we arrive at a new totality. Okay. Okay. And we are still staying on with uh, thematic preliminaries. Okay, we have discussed how the when we when we start with the the, the thought currents of modernity, we do not believe in uh, in a linear model of modernity or linear view of modernity. Uh, we do believe in multiple modernities or, or the way alternative modernities may be construed against uh, one way of looking at European modernity. Okay. Modernity cannot uh, may be European, may be American, may be African, may be Asian, may be Indian. Okay. I mean modernity even, even within India you can, you can look at multiple modernities. Okay. That is why we want to in this course, we want to question one way of looking at modernity. That is why we must interrogate the hitherto existing views about, uh, 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 about one way of looking at modernity, only one way, only singular view of modernity. Okay. Modernity must be pluralistic in nature. That is why when I when I say we must interrogate okay, the term interrogation or interrogating modernity does not mean merely destruction of hitherto existing ideas. Okay. We have already discussed how interrogating modernity or interrogation also refers to the dialectic of engaging with and interrogating hitherto existing and the ethos of interrogating modernity or interrogation loses its significance in the absence of a critical engagement with hitherto existing ideas. We have discussed this. I mean engagement assumes greater significance in the, in the, context, uh, in the context of not just interrogation, uh, but also interrogating the interrogator. I mean both engaging with and interrogating are historically conditioned are, uh, are historically integrated mm, and therefore context specific. This course uh, uh, for the sake of simplicity is about the critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. When I say critical paradigm in sociology, I mean sociological thinking about modernity and sociology as a modern activity and critics of this approach. We have discussed how sociology uh, may be construed as a modern activity in the context of enlightenment, in the context of 
uh, a scientific approach to study society okay mm. and so on and and we must bring about a critic to such 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 view about sociology as a modern activity okay then we we discussed what are the central philosophical and political uh, foundations of uh, uh, this critical modernism or critical modernist paradigm in sociology there there are four central pillars of modernity namely holism or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements okay and what is that holism or totality what is that reflexivity what is rationality what is what, what do what do we mean by social movements holism or totality refers to the idea that society is a unit in some sense and that it can be studied as a single entity reflexivity refers to the idea that we cannot simply observe society from the outside because we are also involved in it rationality refers to the idea that we can understand society in the ways in uh, in which we can explain to other people social movements refer refer to the idea that creative human action both shapes the social whole and in turn is shaped by it we have discussed these things and we are going to discuss it um, in this in today's lecture uh, i mean when we discuss nature of sociological theory and so on and and in the lectures to follow we are we are going to discuss the nitty gritty of these four central pillars of modernity we are going to discuss uh, uh, all the contributions towards modernity i mean i mean many 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 contributors to modernity in the through the lenses of holism or totality reflexivity rationality and social movements okay and and the method that we are going to adapt okay in this course sociological i mean sociological perspectives on modernity okay we are going to deploy the sociological imagination by c right mills sociological imagination is very important to understand the larger historical scene in terms of its meaning and for the inner life and the external career of a variety of individuals secondly it enables us to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions we have discussed this i mean we we in the first lecture we discussed how merely earning more income doesn't uh, alter my class situation okay that's why classes are uh, uh, classes are manifestations of economic differentiation classes are based uh, uh, not on uh, 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 the income that one earns but uh, classes are based on the positions that a, that an individual occupies in the process of production that's why i gave you this example i mean uh, uh, for example there are if there are two blacksmiths one an owner and the other a paid worker okay both belong to two different classes not one okay it it's very important to understand these things okay that's why only by raising somebody's income okay doesn't alter his or her class position okay that's why sociological imagination is very important okay uh, to enable us to take into account how individuals in the welter of their daily experiences often become falsely conscious of their social positions thirdly within that welter within the welter of their daily experiences the framework of modern society is sought and the psychologies of a variety of women and men are formulated the sociological imagination also helps us to grasp helps us grasp history and biography uh, and the relation between the two in within society i mean uh, we will, we also discussed how history is different from chronology okay uh, uh, in the first lecture okay when we when we deal with these these um, these uh, uh, method uh, this method of 
the sociological imagination, okay, we try to apply concept. What is that concept application? What, what, what for primary phase, what are concepts? Concepts are sort and descriptions of reality or a part of reality. Okay. Concepts are not static, concepts are dynamic. How do conce uh, concepts change? Concepts do not change on their own. Concepts undergo transformation only when our real world phenomena undergo transformation. If our real world phenomena undergo changes, then concepts are also bound to make, uh, we, are, we are bound to make changes in our concepts. Concepts, when I say concept application, I mean it, it must be a good working relationship with theory. I mean this does not mean a static possession of information about what Marx or Weber or Giddens or Habermas or uh, Foucault um, or Popper or Kuhn uh, said. Uh, or even or even a programmatic statement that we take their theories to be true uh, and see their own work as uh, as applying them to the examination of specific problems okay instead instead a good relationship with theory implies the ability to think about our immediate research problems in a way which generates uh, ideas of more general relevance which are thus in one way or another theoretical and and to examine the work of other scholars, other sociologists hmm, for such ideas which, which, which might be of use in our own practice. Okay? Okay? I mean, uh, I mean uh, this, 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 this suggests a number of ideas. Okay? I mean when I say a good working relationship with theory. I mean theory about something, whether that, that something, that something is as specific as the reasons for gender disparity or as general as the nature of society in the abstract. In every case, whether it is very specific, very concrete or whether it is very general or abstract, okay, in every case it refers at a greater or lesser degree of abstraction to human experience when I say human experience, I mean at least two experiences that is uh, those are our experiences as well as other people's experiences. Our experiences are not isolated categories. Our experiences uh, uh, must be examined uh, uh, in relation to, uh, uh, to the experiences of other people. Other people's experiences can are similarly are not uh, isolated categories. Other people's experiences must be examined, must be evaluated okay, in, in, in consonance with our own experiences. Okay. It is very important. Okay. Then I mean I, 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 we, I tried to provide a gist of whatever we discussed in the first lecture and in, in, in today's lecture. Okay. At this point, we can make some slightly more general statements about the nature of sociological theory. Explicit theorizing about, uh, uh, about the nature of the social world is the most characteristic feature of the sociological imagination. It is very important as, as against uh, both everyday forms of thought and forms of research in whatever discipline which take theory for granted or abstract from the social altogether. This of course suggests that an awful lot of what passes for sociology is so only by courtesy and not on its own merits. I mean when, when we discuss the nature of sociological theory it is very important to understand what do we mean by sociological theory. Sociology as we know it is, it is, it, it refers to a study of society uh, and its constituents, uh, it is the relationship between individual and society 
that sociology tries to study, sociology is all about social institutions, political institutions, economic institutions and so on. Okay. I mean when we, when we discuss sociological theory, sociological theory consists of perspectives on the nature of the social world. When I say nature of the social world, I do not mean the, the nature of the social world uh, will be subsumed under laws of society. No, they are not laws of society. When I say nature of the social world, I mean their, their concepts, ideas and perspectives uh, which are transferable from one context to another. Thus, it makes uh, a relevant distinction between substantive concepts derived from uh, the specific context and formal concepts which can mediate between between specific and general contexts. This this is very important. Uh, one must understand this. I mean, I mean, I'm 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 looking at uh, Glacier and Strauss, uh, their works, uh, where they refer to uh, how sociological. I mean, nature of the social world. Okay, it's it's all about concepts ideas and perspectives which are transferable from one context to another making a relevant distinction between between substantive concepts and formal concepts what are those sub substantive uh, concepts substantive concepts are derived from the specific context okay it must be very concrete specific particular contexts okay and formal con concepts can mediate between specific contexts as well as general context okay when i when i when i uh, i mean because because what we are what we are interested in why why we are discussing uh, substantive context, uh, concepts and formal concepts what we what, because what we are interested in uh, is the social the interactive and the communicable. I mean, a few sociologists believe that individual social entities, uh, realities can only be known in their own terms and cannot somehow be brought into relation with other social contexts. This does not of course, mean that we are looking for one size fits all explanations. If such an explanation was possible, we would probably have noticed by now. The primary content, the, the, the primary content of sociological theory then is statements about, uh, about the nature of the social world. And when I say statements about the nature of the social world, I mean I do not mean those statements about, about the nature of the social world uh, are isolated categories. They are, they are very much embedded in our society, in our culture, in our polity, in our economy and so on, okay. in, our, uh, uh, in our institutions, in our ideologies and so on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean by, 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 by thinking about the social world in a particular way, okay. uh, by, 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 I, mean, I, I, I mean by thinking about the, the nature of the social world in a, in a specific way, okay. however, we are, we, are, we are simultaneously making assumptions about the way we can know it. If we assume that it is constituted by language, for example, we will adopt a very different method or methodology than if we assume that it is constituted by economic exchange. It, it brings us to the debate on ontology. Okay? I mean, what is what is ontology? What what are the central questions that ontology addresses? What is being? What is existing? Okay. Perhaps for this reason, ontology addresses the question of the nature. What is being? What is existing? Uh, what exists? Uh, and which leads us leads on to methodology, um, the question of how we can uh, come to know it. I mean, I mean this is this is very important uh, because 
we 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 always look at what is reality what is what is what is what is being what is existing okay finally finally however sociologists do not stand outside society any more than anyone else okay we we thus have to uh, eat the food that we have cooked if we make particular assumptions about the social contexts within which other people live especially assumptions about the kinds of knowledge and understanding uh, that are available to them we cannot avoid thinking about ourselves in the same way our own thought is just as much a social fact as anybody else's although it may be produced in different ways different manner in fact sociology is claim to have an excuse for existing uh, for existing largely depends on the claim that the discipline of sociology okay uh, does organize the uh, 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 the the social production of knowledge in a way which differs in in minor or in major ways from the ways in which knowledge is produced in other social contexts this would at least explain why theorism uh, is an important part of sociological knowledge what is being what is existing okay leads us to or uh, leads on to methodology that that we we discussed i mean i mean it brings us to uh, to the question of uh, question of marxes or, uh, or or the deliberations on uh, marx's materialist conception of history that that marx said it is not the cons uh, it is not the consciousness of men that determines their being but on the contrary their being that determines their consciousness it's very important okay marx said it uh, in a, in a, and wrote it in a, in, a, in in a preface to a contribution to a critique of political economy in 1847 when he was barely uh, 28 29 years old okay i mean uh, he 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 started like this i mean i mean uh, you can you can i mean it is the material realities it is the material condition which which determines our consciousness okay uh, earlier notion was that no uh, ideas are prior to the formation of matter but marx made it uh, possible that i mean uh, he analyzed it for he, in a, in in a historical sense no matter is prior to the formation of ideas okay we'll we'll discuss these things uh, when we discuss marx uh, marx's views on uh, or marx's how marx's works have contributed to uh, the debates on modernity okay i mean i mean staying on with with ontological questions i mean then then we can discuss uh, uh, we will we'll discuss sociology and everyday thinking i mean metaphoric blood has been split in the past okay uh, uh, over the extent to which sociological thinking is different from everyday thinking one position which rather like patriarchal ideology in society more generally is in threat as a matter of explicit theory but remains operative in much sociological practice is the assumption that a scientific methodology can take care of the problem so that we can see our own research as purified from the unscientific nature of everyday thinking okay a, a mirror image of this is the argument that sociological thought is no different from uh, any other thought this argument also mirrors the other one in that it appears only at the level of high theory and virtually never at the level of everyday practice except as a uh, pure uh, 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 except as pure cynicism okay more common is the assumption that sociological thinking is under heavy pressure from many sources but that at least in principle some statements about uh, the social world can be made which are in whatever respect better than others now i want to offer you uh, one possible answer which is this okay precisely because thought always takes place within a human and social context thinking okay thinking always happens in a in a specific social and historical context human context okay the question of whether it is true in the abstract is one 
which is effectively meaningless, we cannot know truth in the abstract, because we do not live in the abstract. Thought or thinking, okay? even the most vague and grand theory is an attempt to come to grips with something, something concrete. As we move up this, move up in the scale of abstractions, of course, the extent to which it is a coming to grips with uh, ideas and ideas about ideas, I mean ideas about ideas, okay, increases. But thought or thinking without an object would be void. In other words, it is the object of our research and our relation to it, which gives sociological thinking and by extension theory, whatever validity it has. It implies at least a couple of things, at least two things. Okay. It is very important. Firstly, we as, uh, uh, as sociologists, as, as, as students of sociology, okay, uh, deliberately uh, set out to try to understand social situations, okay, uh, which are not our immediate circumstance. Research is always at least partly a searching out of social contexts that we might otherwise have missed and an attempt to make sense of elements of them that we might otherwise have taken for granted. This is true to an uh, to an incomparably greater extent, which we practice, I mean ethnographic research in, in contexts that we are not uh, previously familiar with and it becomes even more complex when we attempt to understand society, whatever we mean by that as a whole. I mean what is that ethnographic research? I mean it is a qualitative research method. I mean, uh, it involves field study, participant observation and so on. Okay? Uh, uh, if, if a question comes up, then we will address this. Okay? Uh, but, but this is not about uh, research methods in sociology, that is why I am not going to, uh, uh, going, uh, I am not trying to go deep into uh, ethnographic research. Okay? I mean, in other words, it is, our, you, it is our grappling with the unfamiliar or with the familiar in unfamiliar aspects thinking about society for example, I mean that makes the difference between uh, everyday thinking, everyday thought and sociological imagination. Okay? It refers to of course, that, that there are a lot of amateur sociologists out there, I mean in, I mean, in this respect, uh, in this respect the greatest contribution of methodology is not to guarantee the truth but to push us into taking systematic account of phenomena, which would generally neglect or treat anecdotally in, in everyday life. Okay? That is the first. Secondly, though this attempt to make sense of the social world is not something which we can expect to have an, have an end, except provisionally, I mean why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm provisionally I mean why I am making this statement provisionally, provisionally we, we make theoretical assumptions at the start of our research. Hopefully, we have modified them by the end, but if my previous claim is right, we need to continue researching new contexts in order to maintain the unfamiliarity, which is at the root of the sociological imagination. And more generally, if theory is an active relationship of investigation and understanding by producing knowledge, okay, it is likely to continue developing at least until the social conditions of all thinking or all thought okay, are such that the barriers we have previously identified to knowledge in everyday life no longer hold. At this point, however, everyday, uh, I mean, I mean um, at this point at least, everyone would be a sociologist uh, and theory as a specialized professional activity would have lost its justification. The complete theory, I mean whether, whether it is possible or not, whether a theory is complete or not, if such a thing is possible at all, okay, 
that also requires critical interrogation. Okay. A com the complete theory would, would, would thus coincide with the merging of sociological practice into a society from which it no longer differentiated itself. And such is the paradigm, okay? such is the paradigm that, that we must try to unfurl. We must try to unfurl the debates about such paradigms or models. At, at this point, I can, I can start to tell you uh, uh, what this course is actually about. I have already said that this course is about the, the critical modernist paradigm in, in, in sociology and I have defined some major elements of that paradigm or that model. Okay? Okay? But that does not tell us uh, what it teach, what it uh, counts as. One definition of, 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 of paradigm is the consensus across the relevant scientific community about the theoretical and methodological rules to be followed, the instruments to be used, the problems to be investigated and the standards by which research is judged. Okay. I am taking it from Gordon Marshall, but, but, but actually I mean uh, I, I borrow this, this, this idea about a paradigm from Thomas Kuhn. I mean uh, uh, Thomas Kuhn he wrote uh, the structure of scientific revolutions in 1962. Okay. Uh, by, by, by now, I mean then, then what is that paradigm? I mean it is a consensus across the relevant scientific community about the theoretical and, and methodological uh, rules to be followed, the instruments to be used, the problems to be investigated and the standards by which uh, research is judged, evaluated, examined. Okay. By now, it should not have escaped uh, uh, your attention uh, that there are more than one of these in sociology, I mean more than one paradigm. We do not have, we do not follow a single paradigm. Uh, in, in sociology. Even in sciences, people do not follow a single paradigm. I mean, this is not, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I offered a course on science, technology and society in, uh, in the last semester uh, uh, under, uh, under this uh, massive open online uh, courses uh, initiated by MHRD of the government of India. I mentioned how, how, how there cannot be even a single paradigm in sciences or engineering. Okay. Uh, but, but, but in this course, okay, uh, please try to understand that uh, there cannot be a single paradigm or model even in sciences. Social sciences of course, there are multiple paradigms, but though, but, but a few practitioners of science, they, they, they claim that, that there may be a single paradigm. But that is not sustainable. You can sus you cannot sustain this argument. Okay, had there been a single paradigm, okay, then we would not have encountered multiple paradigms in astronomy, in physics, in biology, and so on. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean the 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 modernist paradigm then uh, uh, in in sociology. I mean, uh, I mean the modernist paradigm then is that approach to sociology which treats modernity as a central if not the central it 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 it, it treats uh, uh, modernity as a, as one of the central issues in sociology okay but as i have already said ontology leads on to methodology in other words if we assume that the contemporary social world is so constituted that, that modernity can be a central defining feature, we are saying something not just about the object of knowledge, but we are also by extension making a statement about the way in which it can be known. Lastly, methodology involves thinking about, about uh, uh, the relationship between the knower and the known, between the researcher and the researched. Okay. Uh, since, since, since knowing is itself a social activity, okay, it involves uh, power just as much as any other social activity, good or bad, and is thus in one sense 
political. When I say, when I say this, when I say this, that uh, that uh, that that uh, uh, methodology involves thinking about about uh, the relationship between the knower and the known, between the researcher and the researched. Okay, and and since since knowing is a uh, social activity, okay, it it involves power and authority, just as much as any other social activity. It may be good, it may be bad. I'm not going to evaluate that right now. And if if power is very much embedded in in the process of knowing as a social activity, it is also a political activity. If, if it is a political activity, I mean in much the same way knowledge can be described as an economic activity because of its relation to value, okay, value in exchange or a cultural one because of its relation to meaning and we should not take, take, uh, take uh, a very naive self assessments as political or not political at face value. I mean all intellectual activity is political in the sense uh, that we have we have described, uh, we have discussed till now. Okay. Sociology is also political in another sense, in that its object of study can be thought of as constituted partially or wholly by relations of power. However, relatively little sociology is political in the sense of being connected to, uh, to, uh, to action which alters the relations of power in the, in, uh, in the internal ideological battles of the local intelligentsia and as a means of career advancement. This is of course, a kind of politics which tends to maintain the existing relations of power and this may be true irrespective of whether the contents of the theory are conservative or radical. Okay. This is the, that is why it is very important to know that, uh, that uh, uh, since, since knowing itself, the, 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 the process of knowing itself is, 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 uh, uh, is a social activity, um, it involves uh, power uh, just as much as, uh, as any other social activity, whether good social activity or bad social activity. Uh, and 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 is thus in in one sense political. Okay. In 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 so far as it it represents a consensus. I mean in in paradigm you you uh, I mean what what Kuhn suggested that uh, that uh, that the scientific community. Uh, I mean whether 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 uh, 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 to to check the validity and reliability of, of any scientific investigation. Okay. What scientific, what does scientific community do? The scientific community tries to build consensus, okay. even, even in the process of knowing, because it involves power. Okay. In so far as it represents a consensus, then the, the, the modernist paradigm represents an agreement about the key issues in terms of the proper object of theory, the nature of methodology and the formulation of the political relationships involved. It does not represent a consensus about the resolution of those issues. Okay? It is very important. How these issues are resolved, there is there may not be any consensus, but, 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 but it is very important to understand that the modernist paradigm represents an agreement that agreement may be a manipulated one, that agreement may be, may be uh, uh, a manufactured one, okay. but, but the, 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 the modernist paradigm represents an agreement about the key issues in terms of, of the proper object of theory, the nature of methodology and, and the formulation of the political uh, relationships involved. Okay. Then, if, if, if this is so, then what does it truly uh, represent, what do they indicate uh, uh, 
uh, I mean the, the, this, this, this modernist paradigm in sociology or critical modernism uh, or, or critical, what are the critical themes or, or, or a set of ideas that we tend to see. Okay. Before, before getting into, uh, into uh, before, before starting the discussion on, on those four, four pillars, pillars of modernity, holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Okay. Let us, let us first see what are, I mean, I mean we know critical modernism and what are the other schools of thought. Okay, let us see. Within the overall modernist approach, we will be focusing on the critical modernist paradigm and its opponents and the contradictory views that we tend to get. The critical paradigm is in a very broad sense the approach to sociology which derives from Marx and Weber, Karl Marx and Max Weber. We will be looking at how this approach developed through structuralism and western Marxism. At the critics of this paradigm from feminist, postmodernist, postcolonial and other perspectives, I mean cultural studies also is very important. And at contemporary uh, uh, attempts at rethinking these paradigms, these different schools of thought, different, different models of modernity. The other major approach within the modernist paradigm the functionalist and the and positivist tradition deriving from uh, Emil Durkheim and Talcott Parsons is no longer a major contender in terms of explicit social theory uh, in the English speaking world. I mean uh, India is also no exception to this, although its assumptions permeate most academic research and virtually all non academic research. This, this, this apparent paradox that most contemporary sociological theorists reject a school whose ideas are, are dominant uh, in most empirical research has to do with uh, the close relationship between this school and common sense in the, in the sense of the dominant modes of thought within a given society. On the one hand, this school reproduces many elements of the ideology of common sense, for example, the assumption that there are straightforward facts out, out there about um, which we can know the truth um, or the assumption that our own thinking is not distorted and determined by anything other than foreseeable ignorance or occasional uh, emotion. Its approach to the problem of reflexivity and the question of the relationship between the knower and the known, between the researcher and the researched tends to involve methodologies which claim to render the issue of uh, issue non problematic and thus irrelevant. What is aimed at is a position from which uh, society can be treated as an external um, as an external given. In other words, in other words positivism's bracketing of the issues related to reflexivity makes its approach to modernism appear as simply an uh, unhelpful reduction of the, the, of the complexities of critical modernity. What is, what is the positivism? I mean positivism uh, in, in the 19th century and early part of the 20th century, late 19th century and early part of the 20th century is a school of thought which, which uh, held, uh, held uh, the supremacy of sciences over non-sciences. There are, there are different tenets of positivism, there, there, there are central tenets, different central tenets of positivism. Okay? I mean I can go on and on I mean uh, in positivism, but, but, but uh, this is not the, the, the way, uh, this is not the part of this course. Uh, I mean uh, to, to give a glimpse of the idea that how positivism emerged. Positivism is a, 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 is a stage of society uh, which could interrogate the dominance of religion, the dominance of church, I mean all religious institutions. Uh, it, 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 uh, it tried to hold aloft the banner of science. Uh, uh, it also surpassed the, I mean it, it also rejected the, 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 the views of uh, 
theology as well as metaphysics uh, and so on okay but 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 the way that positivism tried to make a demarcation between science and non science must be interrogated okay that is that is very important okay when i say non sciences i do not refer to superstitions or religion or gods and goddesses and so on but but non sciences i mean culture art literature music Okay, I think I think uh, I think the scope of positivism in in the nineteenth century, uh, late nineteenth century, and early twentieth century was limited. That's why I said positivism's bracketing of the issues related to reflexivity, okay, makes its approach to modernism appear as simply as an unhelpful reduction of the complexities of critical modernism. This is important. We must understand this. Okay. that uh, that what positivism said that science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it that is methodological that there is only one method common to all sciences uh, irrespective of their subject matter that is methodological monism that the method of science is the method of induction that is inductivism that from particular instances we must uh, it tend to arrive at a concrete generalization okay that that the that the hallmark of science uh, uh, lies in the fact that uh, uh, all scientific statements must be systematically verifiable systematic verifiability that there must be a dichotomy between fact and value okay suppose this is a, this is a table this is a laptop these are facts but if i say this this laptop looks beautiful or ugly then i add value to it okay that there must be a dichotomy between fact and See, positivism's contributions must be understood, uh, understood in 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 the context of uh, enlightenment, in the context of uh, uh, interrogating theology as well as metaphysics. It's very important. But 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 in 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 the modernist construal of uh, uh, against the backdrop of modernist construal uh, in two thousand seventeen eighteen, uh, okay. Uh, in the 21st century positivism's bracketing of these issues i mean i mean uh, bracketing of, of uh, i mean the the way uh, uh, it dealt with i mean it propagated the idea of uh, uh, demarcation between science and non science um, uh, the way it dealt with uh, uh, or it propagated the idea of autonomy of sciences um, not relative autonomy but absolute autonomy of sciences and cognitive authority of sciences okay i mean this 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 uh, i mean this kind of bracketing of the issues related to reflexivity okay uh, makes its approach to modernism appear as simply an uh, unhelpful uh, reduction of the complexities of critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay on the other hand the functionalist and positivist schools um, have decisively contributed to restructuring common sense via its appearance in applied social science the terms and categories of state and uh, corporation activity uh, are heavily influenced by this approach to social reality modernization theory the best known uh, functionalist contribution to sociological modernism um, i mean is a classic example of this issue of sociological theory as governing ideology the 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 process of uh, development is treated as a mechanical sequence of events which is simply an instrumental means to reach economic prosperity and enter full modernity the crude ideological use of this argument is simply that 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 political choices and the furthering of economic interests uh, can be presented as technical necessities uh, i mean you may you may look at the imposition of the bretton woods twins the international monetary fund and the the international bank for reconstruction and development uh, popularly known as the world bank uh, and all imf world bank aid packages for example the imposition of these 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 packages in fact okay they can be presented to us uh, as 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 technical necessities 
people have make sacrifices now for the sake of a better future what is what is in practice happening of course is that the present sacrifices of one group of people are benefiting another group of people in in uh, i mean here and uh, uh, now and and uh, and but and that the better future shows no signs of, no 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 signs of arriving the crude effect of bracketing uh, reflexivity in other words uh, is to deny that theoretical um, arguments can be designed to serve or can be used to serve political interests theorizing theorizing is 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 treated as being about society but not not as happening within social contexts a more complex effect of avoiding reflexivity or a more complex reason for doing so okay is that by denying that knowing as a social activity uh, is a social relationship between the knower and the known between the researcher and the researched uh, and uh, it 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 becomes easier to develop theories which treat other people simply as the passive objects uh, both of the theorists description of them and of their practical treatment by managers marketing executives civil servants and politicians okay this is this is this is very important so 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 when we discuss critical modernist paradigm in sociology appears to us as more interesting the more complex and the more theoretically credible version of sociological modernity and the course will mainly focus on it this the, the present course sociological perspectives on modernity will of course run into functionalist and positivist approaches at various points during the course because theorizing starts from everyday thinking everyday thought okay ways of thinking which are mm, which are as close to common sense ideology as positivism uh, have a habit of reproducing themselves and reappearing in the form of new theories we'll also be looking at arguments that critical modernism's adherence to rationality makes it unable to be genuinely reflexive okay that in effect it is just as much an ideology of power as affirmative modernity this is interesting the the the, the last thing that i want to say about what a modernist paradigm in sociology is i mean it is that i'll be using a substantive definition of sociology rather than a disciplinary one i suggested earlier that that the sociological imagination by c right mills is a, is is characterized by explicit theorizing about the nature of the social world and and this is of course this is indeed something which doesn't just happen in sociology departments uh around the corner i mean uh, i mean if you look at around the corner i mean uh, in departments of history anthropology philosophy women studies cultural studies and so on geography human geography human ecology uh, uh, even in sciences okay and so on we we t- run into people looking at the same issues they are really sociologists but they don't know it at the same time of course many people in sociology departments do their level best to avoid making any of their theoretical assumptions explicit lastly though the sociological imagination is not confined to the universities or research institutes one of the most creative sources of for social theory are social movements you look at uh, industrial revolution french revolution october revolution chinese revolution i mean cultural revolution and so on radical democratic move in even 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 india's uh, fight against colonialism okay mm. all radical democratic movements the workers movements the women's movements the the environmental movements and so on the everyday experience embodied in and transformed in these movements continues to nourish new forms of critical theorizing just as much as the common sense of domination and exploitation uh, nourishes uh, affirmative theory and we'll look at some major social theories related to these movements i i i said uh, i mean i i said it uh, i mean i said at the uh, at the start of this course 
at uh, that uh, uh, at the start of this course that this course doesn't require you to learn vast amounts of information about individual thinkers it doesn't require what it does require you to do is to think clearly about the issues involved there is no one right way to do this the course and the reading lists are designed to uh, uh, designed so that you can think about the things that interest you and read in um, whatever way you find most helpful. I will be saying more about this in, this, uh, uh, in the lectures to follow, but these, these lectures are basically uh, there to help you find a way into the ideas uh, and the language. Theory often means, uh, uh, theory often seems more terrifying than 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 it actually is because one of the basic strategies of any aspiring science or profession is to develop jargon and specialized references medieval clerics spoke latin and discussed the idea of theologians and uh, i mean socialists use their term uh, with use their own language in a particular way uh, and discuss each other's ideas all of these is something that can be learned in the same way that people interested in films come to learn the names and techniques of particular directors or, or people who pick up a new sport learn the rules and the jargon uh, that goes with it. That, that, that might be enough analogy, there are infinite number of possible ways into this field of thought and they are all interrelated. I mean you may read one author and you will learn a lot about another one and pick up ideas and phrases that will help you make uh, more sense of the whole field and that is why there are no set texts and no hierarchy of readings. The central thing is the uh, uh, I mean the central thing which, which remains uh, is, is uh, the ideas uh, I mean they are the ideas themselves and you are thinking in and through those ideas. Okay? Then, 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 then what are these ideas? What are these critical themes? Okay? In, in, in the next lecture, okay, we are going to discuss uh, uh, the, the modernist paradigm in sociology and what are the critical themes or what are the critical set of ideas which are very much involved in, which are very much embedded in, in, in the construal of the modernist paradigm in sociology. Thank you.